Hi, I'm Randy Hollenbeck, and this is the Music Roundtable. Today on the show, we have Brendan from alternative rock band, The Nocturnal Affair. Hey, hey. I just wanted to start by digging into some of your history. What or who inspired you to get into music? Oh, man. How long you got? Uh, David Bowie, Prince, Elton John, Trent Reznor, George Michael. I mean, Styx. <laughs> and that's just like, you know when I was a kid. How did the band form? I had this band under another moniker starting in about 2015. That's when we dropped our first demo. That's where our song Just Run comes from. And then around 2017, we changed the name to something a little more serious and continued from there. You reached out and found different members that you thought would fit with the band? Yeah. Pretty much. How did you come up with the name for the band? So I was in a metal band called Wretched Sky before this band. And we had already called ourselves another name before it was the Nocturnal Affair. And we so happened to rehearse late at night at this 24-hour lockout studio that we were all renting. And I was rehearsing with this band. And a few members from the metal band decided they wanted to use the studio to hang out, have some beers, maybe smoke a little. And they didn't know I was there. And they didn't know I was in this band yet. So they walked in as we were rehearsing. And they... It acted like they walked in on me cheating on them. They were like, "Why are you, why are you working with this band? Are they, are they better players than us? Is it, did we do something? Do you, do you like playing with them more than you like playing with us?" So when it when it was time to change the name, it it became the Nocturnal Affair. Okay, um, what city are you based out of? Vegas, Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay, um, I want to dig in a couple of your songs. You had Down, it came out with the album Metamorphosis. And it starts out with like industrial sounds in the music at the beginning. And then there's like a cool piano breakdown. And then this lyric stuck out to me, come down, I can't fake this smile any longer. Morality might win. Can you tell me a little bit about the song lyric and how the song got created? I wrote those lyrics when I was dealing with somebody who liked to cry wolf about hurting themselves in order to get either a response out of me or a response or sympathy out of other people following that person doing something terrible, right? So somebody does a, a bad act, people respond to that and go, hey, you can't do that. And then their response to that is, they're going to hurt themselves, right? So it's like they're practically on the ledge. They're threatening they're going to jump. 
and at this point I was just exhausted, you know, so that's, it's like, come down, come down from there, I don't, you're not really meaning this, and I'm starting to not care, so it's just, eventually you can only cry wolf so many times, and, and gaslight, and hurt somebody so many times, until they, you know, walk away for their own good. How did you decide to use that cool piano breakdown like towards the end there? How did that come about? I've always been a fan of the progressive side of things, whether it's Frank Zappa, Mike Patton, or the adventures that Trent Reznor took with music for downward spiral, the fragile, etc. So the songs already it was such high gritty energy. I wanted to see what would happen if we just like, all right, pause, time out, let's do a little something right here. <laughs> Build everything back up. It just felt right. Come down. I can't fake this smile any longer. Morality might win Hear me out The silence only made our coldness stronger Reality set in You guys just recently released uh, the Pesh Mode cover, It's No Good. And that was definitely an awesome choice. That was always my favorite song by them. Um, what made you choose that cover to cover that song? I have had that song sitting in a garage band session since 2015. I have a whole little folder in my computer of just like tons of covers that I want to perform eventually. I'm a huge fan of the crooners, Sinatra, Dean Martin, etc. And I love that they always put their own twist on songs that had already been around for decades. So I figured, why can't we continue to do that? Obviously, I love releasing original content, but I still love singing those the other songs that I like. So one of the songs in that folder is uh, the Depeche Mode cover. And just, I believe, over COVID was when we decided to, like, really put some high-end production on it, record it the right way, excuse me, and, um, you know, Lawyer came out, Logan mixed and mastered and co-produced, and we had a blast doing it. And then we kind of just, like, put it on the shelf for a little while, and let it collect dust, and kind of just see, you know, whenever we'd want to take it out and use it. And then everything with Depeche Mode has been happening. They're kind of doing, I think they're on their like almost felt farewell tour. Unfortunately, one of the members passed away. So I, I don't know how much longer they're going to do it for. So, you know, if there was any time to pay an homage to them, I feel like it would be now.
I recently saw you guys play at in Pittsburgh at the Hard Rock and you pulled out another cover, What is Love? <laughs> now how how did you even decide we're gonna do this with this song and rock it out, you know? I so this is a I've never really taken us completely seriously. I think the moment you start taking things in anything you do too seriously, you're going to have a terrible time and everything's going to fall apart. That being said, never in a million years would I think we would goof around and do a cover of Hathaway's, you know, single. I love the song. I love the original song. I've loved it since I was a kid. And I think we were just looking for, we had just gotten off tour with the 69 Eyes. COVID happened. Andy, my guitar player, presented to me the idea. And he's been wanting to do this song with a band for a decade. He's already, it's, it's his composition, his guitar, his everything. He put everything together. Um, I just threw vocals on it to what felt right. But when Hathaway has already paved the way for the melody, there's really not much, you know what I mean? So we went on tour with Fozzie in 2022. And I don't believe we did it. But this recent tour, we went out to give it a try. And people lost their marbles. They, like, loved it. It became, like, a huge party song. And we saw the room light up when we played it. So we're like, okay, maybe we should do this more. Like, this is... We also... We gave it a test drive on the Jericho Cruise this last year, too, and people loved it. So we're doing it, and it's a blast. And it's, it's gone from, like, this is kind of silly, why are we doing this, to this is my favorite song of the night. Like, it's we're having a fucking really good time. People that don't know us or our music know a song to sing along to jump around you know bond with us so it's awesome okay now how are you enjoying being on tour with smile empty soul how's that tour going oh it's easy peasy they're great guys uh what you see is what you get you know they aren't they aren't trying to pull any fast ones on you it's it's professional yeah they're great And they're very patient because there's about three people on their crew, four people, and there's nine of us. <laughs> they're, they're, they're traveling around in a Winnebago. They got it figured out. There's two people that play on stage. They don't have a lot of gear. They don't even go to the merch until after the show. They've got, like, the whole system. And we roll up with a driver, a tour manager, a merch girl, you know, five members. It's like... <laughs> We're having a good time. And we brought a sound guy this time too. When they're also they're using it. So they're being very patient and very accommodating. Um, what do you guys got planned for the rest of this year? We're gonna take a break in July to work on some more new music. I think we're actually gonna go record the What is Love cover the right way. And then we're gonna hit the road again starting around August. And we're gonna hit all the markets that were on the radio. I believe we just hit the top 30 on the SMR charts. I think we're at 27 right now. So we're going to hit the cities that are playing us uh, pretty much from August to September, maybe October. And how can we get a hold of you guys? Facebook, Instagram, Twitter? We've got everything. We've got Facebook. We've got Instagram. We've got a TikTok where you can watch the new video on. We've got a YouTube channel. But we try to keep our website as uh, as old school as that could be now. We try to keep our website as up to date as possible for all the information. That way, all the outlets, whatever you use, the nocturnalaffair.com. That's all the questions I have. Thanks for coming on the show today. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Thanks for having me.